desert out to shed the sun Laid out and feel the brunt And I keep the world away to be asleep Throughout the day is all I want Bicycle Club comes from a restaurant in North London. It is as boring as that. And we were 15 years old and didn't quite realize how much of an impact it would have on the rest of our lives. So we just stole the name because we needed a name. And that's it, really. We were driving to our first show and we still didn't have a name. And we literally just drove past this place and said, well, that will do for now. Thinking now meant like the next couple of weeks and then we'd probably go back to just mm. being school kids but we're still here talking about it. <laughs> it kind of just became a full-time thing when we left school because we'd already been playing for a few years and we pretty much signed a record deal as soon as we finished high mm. school. It's funny because me and, me and Ed used to always talk about like the band and what we were doing. We never ever sort of mentioned the word like we've made it. We were always just so mm. like content with what we were doing at the time, even if it was playing a really small show to like 10 people or the first time we played at Glastonbury Festival, and it was all just, yeah. in a way, we weren't the most ambitious band in the world. We were always just like really satisfied with where we were at at that time. It's all right now. Never did see 
the one? Is this the place where it all stems from? Where it had every right to become? Step away, step away, stay numb. Is he worth that today? It's alright now, I can wait. We cannot think of the cause, but that like the days we lost. How's it going? Made a plan to be someone. Mess it up when the moment comes. Step away, step away, stay now. It's alright now. Made a plan to be someone. Mess it up when the moment comes. Step away, step away, stay now. It up when the moment comes. Step away, step away, stay down. Made a plan to be someone. Mess it up when the moment comes. Step away, step away, stay down. Shuffle was actually kind of the first song where we used the, the writing process that we are talking about, where Jack came yeah. to us with um, a beat and a sample with a kind of a, a bit of a melody over it, and then we, we worked on it and changed it, and Jack went back and forth with it. Um, that started off as a song about four years ago, and it was just the piano loop and maybe the, the top line for the chorus, yeah. and that's it. And I think it was Jamie, our guitar player, who was like, "This is this is really cool because it wasn't it wasn't like anything we'd done before. This was the start of the transition into the electronic kind of dancey world, and we worked in it in the same the same way we talked about in the other songs." I think I'm just I tend to just write loops basically and like little scraps of songs rather than whole arrangements, and so it takes the four of us together to to really finish the song. Thank you. Good evening.
If you guys know the words to this next bit, please join in. Don't be shy. You gave to me all I know. I will stay here. I will not go. You gave to me all I know. I will stay here. I will. Lights Out Was Gone has probably one of my favorite videos that we have. Yeah. Um, we basically set up a competition where people could submit their own ideas and their own videos. And someone just sent this three minute clip of this, I suppose it's like a weekend dance mm. uh, event that they have in a square in this rural Mexican town. I think it's it's probably common all over the country that elderly folk get together and, and dance. Um, and it's just that for three minutes, but there's something so beautiful about it and it really f really fitted the song well just kind of just pure happiness in these people just doing like just dancing and enjoying music and um be interesting to listen to what they were really dancing to because to us yeah they're like, but it's probably some fast-paced kind of acoustic and um, so shortly like after music. we we f uh, finished the video we we were playing in mexico city and actually c stumbled across a very similar scene and Lucy Rose, who sings on the song, went and had a dance with some old man. So it kind of yeah. it went full circle.
Your eyes started off, it, it used to be called Reverb Bass. Hmm. And I remember Jack had the demo and he didn't want to show it to our manager because he thought our manager would like it too much. It was quite popular. It was like it was a completely different song again, and he was like, "Jason's gonna like this song too much, and it's <laughs> it's not what we should be doing." And eventually, Jason heard it, of course, and made us kind of do a version of it, which worked out, you know. We went and recorded it with a guy called Ben Allen in Atlanta, um, and he sort of sprinkled some um, interesting electronic uh, sounds to it to sort of give it a bit more character and we were already pleased with mm. the results. That's the thing that really makes the song, it's, it's kind of a weird sounding pop song. Mm. And he produced Merryweather Post Pavilion which is kind of a perfect example of that. It's an incredibly strange sounding record but when you get into it all the melodies, you know, they sound like the Beach Boys. Mm. Will I see everybody's hands please? All right.
works together well. I think it's more than musically, you have to have a good band dynamic. And I think that's the reason Bombay Bicycle Club works. I think it extends past just playing music together. You know, you spend so much time on tour together that you can't just be good at that, otherwise it would all fall apart. And I reckon that's the reason it's lasted so long and the, the reason we're still doing this, you know. Um, everyone gets on, everyone's still friends. We've got slightly different personalities, but they work with one another. I won't go into specifics, but it, it's a good group dynamic. I just think the important thing is that you were friends before you started the band, and not just a band that put up an ad in a paper and met some stranger and then got successful, so kind of got stuck together. Um, I feel like we all got close because of our taste in music and then formed a band afterwards, and that's the perfect way to do it. Mm. You see a lot of bands that can, that can play music well together, but they hate each other. It just it must be the worst thing ever, going on tour for months and months on end. I, I don't know how anyone could do it. All right then, for this next song, would you please welcome back to the front of the stage the incredible Liz Lawrence. If you want to rain, you could come out and see me. I could be home by now. And if you want to rain, you could. 
You could come out and see me. I could be home by now. When the whistle blows and we pull out slow, this is where I build my home. And I wait for you so patiently. Letting you find your own If you wanna try You could come out and see me I could be home by now But anywhere I am Just tell me you're waiting for me I could be home by now and If you wanna try You could come Tension flee. I was born crying out, and it's come back to me. When everyone else is setting up to fall, I just think back on it all. I remember long drives sitting in the back, looking out at endless snow. Silence. If you won't spill your heart, I chase you for the words you owe. And you know, and you know, and they're begging, come home. And you know, and you know, and they're begging. Songwriting has has changed dramatically over the years. Um, I think it's just part of uh, growing up. Really, your tastes change quite dramatically, and um, you're kind of restless in 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 your creativity. Um, so when we started, we were kind of more of a just a pretty normal guitar band. Listened to a lot of uh, early '90s American indie guitar music, like Pavement and. Sonic Youth, and then put out an acoustic record next, which was like more to do with British folk music. And then now, uh, I feel like we're making music that lends itself more to the electronic world. Um, but yeah, it's just I think it's when you're young, you just you're very mm. rarely settled with what you're listening to. So our four albums came out between when we were 19 and 23, which is you know you go through so much in that period of time, probably more change than you do in the rest of your life, and I think it's reflected in the music. Whenever you want it, whenever you want it, whenever you 
want it, wherever you want it, whenever you want it, wherever you want it, whenever you want it, wherever you want it. Anywhere you are, my love, let me comfort you. Your eyes dripping blue I'll be the night flight looking for sin You'll be the bright light drawing me in No room for doubt so just stubbornly keep on But for how long? Well, I think our fans differ from place to place and even in the US you notice it you know inside the country you, you play a show in San Diego and everyone sort of seems very outward and comfortable with their bodies and like moving loads <laughs> and you play in like Minneapolis and they're still getting into it but in their own sort of insular way and it's something you that you notice when, when you're on stage. It's kind of the thing that keeps it interesting is, is looking at different crowds every night and how how their situation can maybe be affecting what they're doing. Mm. We played some gigs in Japan and when you're playing the songs, you're like, I, I think these people like, hate us. Like They <laughs> really hate us because everyone's so polite and reserved that they're just appreciating the music. And then in between the songs, everyone goes absolutely crazy like 10 seconds or so and then stops and is incredibly reserved and you know appreciative again that throws me every time thank you very much so uh this is kind of our cool down section of the song we're gonna play some songs from our second record uh, this is a song called rinse me down
chasing the night to make it right. Oh, and you had caught like a rabbit. Told you to wait, but it's too late. You've got your man, rinsing him down. on guitar I think a good show for me is just when a crowd um, a crowd is on the same wavelength as you and, and stops you from being self-conscious because we're moving around a lot on stage and smiling a lot and looking a bit goofy sometimes mm -hmm. and when a crowd's straight faced that makes you feel a bit uncomfortable sometimes but when a crowd is just letting themselves go as well and they, they, they give you that freedom to just enjoy yourself that's, that's all that matters to me, really. Something in her world and I guess she 
as we search for some modern crystal. That is not just as it starts. That is not what you are. You're a layer of my clothes made of. The last horror story I can think of is saying um, "Hello Dublin" in Belfast, <laughs> which is probably the worst two cities to get confused, yeah. given the, uh, the the history between them. And I think it was so ridiculous they must have just thought that I was joking. So actually, it was it wasn't as bad in the end because there was no yeah. way they thought I could have been serious. They were fine with it, surprisingly. We played a load of festivals over the summer. I, I think we played you know, three or four every week for about four months. And we had Glastonbury Festival coming up, which is obviously one of the biggest festivals in the world and incredibly important to us. And the day before we were playing in Luxembourg, driving overnight back to Glastonbury to play. And we were driving and our bus broke down and we were like, shit, I, like we have to make the show. So we got off the bus, just like called up some cabs, made these cabs drive us to the, the French coast to Lille. Then we all paid and this, this is like a 12-person crew. We all paid to go on the Eurostar to London. St standing in the corridor. Yeah, just like standing there. Also, I had my bass. I was practicing <laughs> bass on the bus without a case, obviously not thinking the bus would break down. So I was just on the Eurostar <laughs> holding a bass. And then we got to London, and we just we had to get cabs. Like We called cabs up and went to Glastonbury in cabs. Ludicrous thing to do, but we, had, we made the show. You know, We had to do it. Where's the light? 
Thank you. Hey, I'd just like to say a big thank you to uh, Radio BDC for uh, all their support to us. I don't think any of this would be possible without them, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And thank you guys for coming. This is one of the biggest shows that we're doing on this tour, so thank you.
Is it late in the? Is it late in the? There's a story in which my eyes shut. Thank you. Let's keep this dance party going, huh? Yeah. 
Luna's a song that, like a few other songs on the record, started off with a sample. I use sampling now as sort of a way to, it's kind of a springboard for inspiration. So when you're kind of stuck with, for ideas, you just go through your record collection and something grabs your attention and then you play along with it like you were playing with a band in a room or something. And it's, it's kind of, you're knocking ideas around with this other piece of music. It was a song that went through, I think, many changes. Mm. Um, yeah, when we first heard Luna as a band, it was this absolutely crazy kind of dancehall Bollywood track, and we listened to it and we're like, "This, this is, this is completely insane!" Like, I don't think we can release this. But with it, within the song was something like there was a like a glimmer of an incredible song. So you know, Jack took it back and worked on it some more, and then showed it to us again, and it was a bit closer to what you hear on the record. And that happened, you know, a number of times until we have the finished product. And it'd be incredibly interesting to release the songs as they were at the beginning, because mm. they're almost unrecognisable to what you hear at the end. I will be myself Then I'll wear you for the The story I always tell about Always Like yeah. This is me, um, I had just written it, I, it was, what, like six years ago or something? 2008, yes. And I just finished it at, at my house and I went to the pub and I brought my iPod and I was so excited about it, I wanted to play it to all my friends who were there. And I played it to this one guy who is a, <laughs> you know, I think he's, he's, he fancied himself as a bit of a music buff. And he said, you know what I love about this song, Jack? It's just a really good B-side. It's just one of those obscure tracks that's just going to be a really nice B-side to a song. And it it's actually turned out to be one of our most popular songs of all time, I think. And every time he comes to a show, yeah. I always just kind of rub it in his, <laughs> his face a little bit. Just because he, <laughs> he... I don't know, he just obviously 
had a completely different idea of it. He did redeem himself, though. I believe he introduced you to the song that you sampled Shuffle yes. up in the end. Then without, come back. without him, Shuffle would not exist. So It's all perfectly balanced. Oh, she can wait for what I can give She knows what I am, but she won't believe me Is it all okay when well, I come off the light? Is I can't believe it It's always like this, like this, like this Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this Try to look proud, but you're not in the slightest. It's happening now, and it's always been like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Don't 
I still don't know The night has gone and I'm walking home But I have still done I still don't know And it's so hard to find the silent type Someone shy who walks with the hive And you're so cold when you're in this crowd And I am on my way now The night has gone and I'm walking home But I still don't, I still don't know The night has gone Thank you, Boston. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the House of Blues for having us. Thank you to Luxley and Milo Green. And have a wonderful evening. We'll see you soon. Carry Me was one of the first songs uh, written for the new record uh, and it was mm -hmm. the first single that we put out. The reason being we wanted to, we wanted our f uh, the first sort of taste of the record be the most dramatic and the one that probably confuse people the most. I think it's probably the most different sounding yeah. track. It was written in a dressing room in Brussels. I remember that because the demo was called Brussels. Um, and then took it to this cottage in Holland where me and Ed stayed for a bit, doing some writing. And again, just kind of fleshed it out. A lot of the songs start off very electronic and very far away from what Bombay Bicycle Club sound like, and it's a matter of translating them. And that's a process that most of the songs on the new record went through. Mm. It's the song we played last in our set as well. It's always to go, good to go out on a bang, and that's the one for it. You know, I think people are like, what the hell is going on? It's just an assault on the senses.
carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me, you carry, you carry, you carry, you carry me. You carry me, 